Turning now to the review of the transfer of one of Canada's most notorious killers to a medium security prison, it found the decision made by Corrections Canada was sound and that the rules were followed. We want justice to be served. And in the case of this inmate, he was given the harshest sentence possible in our Canadian criminal justice system. I can assure you that we are doing our job by keeping him securely behind bars in a federal penitentiary. The report, however, found that the families of the Bernardo victims could have been warned earlier about the transfer. It also found that more information could have been given to them. For more on this story, we've reached Tim Danson in Toronto. He is counsel for the French and Mahaffey families. It's great to talk to you today. Thanks for joining us. You've had some time to reflect on this review's findings. So why do you view them as problematic? Well, first of all, I've only been, had an opportunity to uh, read the report on a preliminary basis, and I will be reviewing it more thoroughly uh, with the families. But even on a preliminary basis, um, I, I'm... I'm uh, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't accept this uh, one size fits all. It's as if there's kind of a bureaucratic checklist and if you check it, uh, the boxes, uh, you end up with uh, an equation that allows you to transfer Paul Bernardo to uh, medium security. I, I think we need to go back to some first principles, one of which is something that the Supreme Court of Canada has consistently said, which is sentencing is the means through which society communicates its moral values. And, and, and those uh, moral values have been captured by the uh, decision of then Associate Chief Justice Assange, the trial judge, uh, who made very significant findings with respect to Paul Bernardo and that he should spend the rest of his life uh, in, uh, in, in a maximum security uh, institution uh, and that he was beyond rehabilitation. Th those are uh, his findings. So uh, when, you, when you look at the report and you look at the criteria that is used, uh, I couldn't help but notice that there appears to be no weight given to the punishment side of the uh, of, of the sentence. Mm. And that's inappropriate when you're dealing with Canada's most dangerous offenders. The other matter is, is that um, when you take that principle that the sentencing uh, is to be the, the, the means through which uh, society communicates its moral values, we need to keep in mind that we're talking about a, a sadistic sexual psychopath. And even at the 2018 and 2021 parole hearing, the parole board found that Paul Bernardo, then 28 years in prison, still had no remorse, no empathy, and no insight. I don't understand why this decision is even being made now when we know that we have a third parole hearing coming up in November. Why wouldn't they wait until we have this further uh, hearing and see what the parole board says whether there's been any change in Paul, Mardo, Paul, Paul Bernardo. And I can assure you that there is none. Mm. Um, there is no cure or treatment for sadistic sexual psychopathy. And, um, and so I, I think that if, if they did comply with the law, and I'm not uh, prepared to concede that yet until I read the report more uh, uh, fully, then the law needs to be changed. And after all, the, the minister and the prime minister, and it would appear like 40 million uh, Canadians, leader of the opposition, have found this decision to be shocking and incomprehensible. Mm -hmm. So if the law currently permits a shocking and inc incomprehensible decision to stand, then you change the law, and we need to change the law to, to distinguish between Canada's worst offenders and the rest of the prison population. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to put a pin in that thought just for now, because you mentioned something I wanted to follow up on early in your answer, which is the families. How are the families feeling following the release of this review? Uh, well, they weren't surprised, but it, 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 it is uh, still bone chilling for them. Uh, you know, when they, when they know what this person did to their children, these unspeakable crimes, and that he's getting this transfer when, as I just said, it's been found by the parole board that he still has no remorse or empathy or insight is very, very tough. And when they say one of the bases upon which they justify the transfer is that he has uh, fully integrated within uh, the inmate population where he was, uh, that is, is simply untenable. First of all, he's not, he was not in the general population in Millhaven. He was on a range with a, with a, a small number of, of inmates. So 
surely that can't be the criteria, but it appears to be. And the other criteria that they say is that um, maximum security penitentiaries are for offenders who would assault prison guards or other inmates. And so therefore that doesn't apply to Paul Bernardo. That criteria can never apply to a sadistic sexual psychopath because these people like Bernardo are cowards. They prey on, on, on vulnerable, innocent children uh, and young women. So, I mean, that's another criteria that doesn't work. And the other uh, aspect of this, which is probably the law at the present time, I don't think they applied it correctly, is they rely on Section 28 of the CCRA that says that they have to give prison conditions that are the least restrictive. And that's a, a principle of general application. And, and it, it's almost, it, that, that's where I say it's like one size fits all. This has to be changed. Hmm. Um, you know, with, with, with people like Paul Bernardo. Well, let me ask you about that because you did mention that earlier. You said yesterday in your statement, if this was done according to policy, which you don't accept at this point, then the policy should be changed, which you just reiterated. So what does need to change to avoid something like this happening again? Well, I think you have to have uh, a completely different legislative regime dealing with um, uh, sexual predators like Paul Bernardo, uh, where it may be that uh, before someone like, w w with the emphasis, I have to say, with the emphasis on, on the punishment and deterrent side of the sentence, this, this, this reflex to rehabilitation uh, in circumstances uh, where all the experts say uh, that these people cannot be treated and cannot be released because they represent a threat to public safety, then clearly you have to have a different regime and not have terminology like the least restrictive. And if there's going to be these kinds of movements, then it has to be based on sound, compelling evidence and leave that to the parole board, not uh, you know administrative, administratively within within the bureaucracy. Um, uh, you just you you just need to treat these people differently. And 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 what I've noticed uh, over my you know, 43 years of doing this is that there really is this kind of systemic uh, mentality that you treat everybody the same. And it's like a cookie cutter ju justice. And that is, is simply not acceptable. Mm. And finally, I want to ask you about the latest political movement on this. Uh, what do you make of Public Safety Minister Marco Mendicino's directive to factor victims into prison transfers, which was issued just yesterday? Well, I mean, that's obviously a, 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 you know, a step in the right direction. Uh, but there are, in my view, much bigger issues. Um, it's not just a question of communicating in advance certain things to uh, to the to the victims the victims of of, of, of the crimes, uh, but you need to have far more transparency uh, in the entire system uh, so that the general public is is properly informed so they can make informed decisions as to whether or not their tax dollars are being spent properly on this important institution. And again, as I've said, there has to be legislative change uh, in, in, in all types of respects uh, with respect to these, these uh, dangerous offenders. It cannot be that you say, well, okay, well, you complied with the law. And as I just said a moment ago, where they all say that this is a shocking, indispensable decision, incomprehensible decision, and then do nothing and not change the law. Change the law. The, you know, the, the, the bureaucrats can't uh, be the, the final say on this. It has to be the government. That's what they're elected to do. There's a problem with the law as it currently exists. Change it. Okay, still many questions surrounding this story. Tim Danson is the lawyer for the families of Kristen French and Leslie Mahaffey. Thank you so much for your time today, sir. Thank you for having me.